Welcome to part 3, September 2021. So, my trip to Cornwall in September 2021 was a proper cock up from start to finish. I mean, how bad could it have been, you ask? Well, when your friends start calling you Calamity Quinn, you know it could not have been great. But, all colourful episodes aside, oh wait, that's another video. Don't want to give too much away yet. But, that trip was important for me on so many levels. It helped set me up, it gave me motivation to keep on at it, but also boosted my confidence. Now reflecting on what happened, no idea um, why I feel confident actually, because I made a big zero of the whole thing. But after Cornwall, I was excited um, once again to push on with this unabated eagerness to get this test done. But what I had learned over the last 18 months and on this Cornwall trip was that old habits and established ways of thinking were changing. And I suppose waiting for anything in this day and age is a lost art. For me, I look at it as a meditation almost. Um, to stop thinking, stop worrying and accept help when it will come when it comes. So to start again, I booked a lesson at my local motor motorcycle school at Raven and I searched for almost a month to try and get a date for the module one test. So I was struggling to find a date when a mod one test was available and at the same time um, that the school could actually do. So a problem actually had been throughout the entire year and I might have actually been able to find a last minute cancellation when my school would never have a slot free to accommodate me. This had been the challenge. So it was knowing that there was a sort of shortage the DVLA were putting on fewer tests and they were only being released a few days earlier and the, but the schools were actually planning weeks ahead and they were often fully booked so it just made no sense why had actually no one thought to fix this and help thousands of people who were desperately waiting for these tests first lesson and module one in the end I decided to just book a lesson with the school and just get some training in. So it was actually on a Monday towards the end of the month in uh, September. So after a day's riding, I sat at the end of the lesson chatting with other students and having a rest before I decided to get back home. Whilst doing this, I decided to keep on searching for test slots, refreshing my phone for over 20 minutes, trying to book, book, you know, book in, log in, log out, trying to find a test. And I was surprised to see there was actually an available slot the day after on the Wednesday. And that was after 20 minutes of logging in and out. So I said, yes, I'm in. So I asked there and then um, if, and I was actually told there had just been a cancellation and I could actually do it. And I decided to go for it. I booked it there and then. Bish, finally got a slot. Could not believe my luck. Well, I actually spent that Monday evening and Tuesday evening focusing on my Mod 1 preparation in the local, local Super Bowl car park. Um, I wasn't fully confident, but I felt that I could do better. Um, so I kept on practicing manoeuvres again and again, watching YouTube videos, examining the map of the obstacle course and the manu different manoeuvres um, to be familiar with it as possible. So on Wednesday morning, I woke up. It was raining. It was cold, wet and windy. <sighs> this was not looking good and I started to imagine all the excuses I would have to make well I hit a cone it was the wind oh my visor knee my glasses were steaming up but I just went for it either way at least I had tried and I would could do better next time and I remembered the raft of advice I'd actually received since Monday once you sit on the bike your test has started keep on checking your observations or you will fail don't hit a cone, we're going to fail. Do not run over the examiner. He don't like him up on Jonesy. You put your foot down, it's an instant fail. Oh, I had to do mine three times. It was so difficult. <laughs> I think I actually received a guide on how to fail in a hundred different ways. But it was fine. Everything was going okay until I missed a cone. I was furious with myself. And then I had a wobble in my U-turn. 
that's it. Failed. I came out of the testing yard, I parked up in my space. As the heavens had opened just minutes earlier, I was now being drenched. Was this a sign? The examiner ignored me and ran for cover. I remembered the story of someone had gotten off the bike before being told and guess what had happened? That's right, they had failed. I sat in the rain, waiting for my instructions. My glasses at this point were now steamed up and I could not see a thing. I wondered if it was worth the risk by taking my glasses off or would I be failed for it? I wiped the lens a bit, did the best I could and I saw that I was being waved over. Did the wave count or would I be failed for it? This was getting ridiculous, so I got off the Z650 and I just ran for cover. My instructor and examiner didn't look happy. This was not looking good. What are you seriously like up here on bike for, duck? I was starting to feel sick. You plonker. I mean, what have we done? You passed mod one, said the examiner. I looked around, just in case he's talking to someone else. I was shocked, I was happy and surprised. He notes I said I had one minor, almost flawlessly, but no, I was, had a very good speed through the traps as well. Jobs are good, I chipped. Animated and enthused by my success, I had dared to dream and I felt I was on a lucky roll. A few hours later I was back at the schoolyard, trying to book a mod too. I kept on refreshing the page if there had been any cancellations. There were none. I logged in and out for almost 30 minutes and had got nothing. I would have to try again at home. It was getting late and I had to leave. So I said my taras and I said I'd be in contact with instructors and I was about to leave when I thought, oh, oh come on I'll have one last go. I didn't want to leave it as it was. Not booking a test was gonna irk me. Trying one last time I refreshed the page and there on my screen was a test in two days on Friday. I couldn't believe it. So I tentatively requested the trainer's availability. And they could, so I booked the slot there and then. It was booked. I was in shock and total surprise. After a year and a half of waiting, not only had I passed my Mod 1, but I booked a Mod 2 within a few days. So I called my riding buddy there and then. <coughs> Mate, Pooley, SOS emergency. I got my Mod 2 on Friday. I need your expertise. Change your plans. Get down today or tomorrow. If I pass, it means I won't be on L plates and it's going to make our life a lot easier. I need you, pal. Pooley called a few minutes later. He'd made Thursday night free and would be down six after work. Bash. I spent four hours out on that Wednesday night riding around Burton. I realised I knew the way to the local hospital in Burton and that was it. In fact, years in the ambulance had left me knowing most of the routes to the local hospitals. More fun than a barrel of monkeys, me. John McLean suddenly jumped in. Come out to the coast. We'll get together, have a few laughs. I'll show you around the local a &E department, he said. Okay, I so need to get out more. <laughs> on Thursday night, it was chucking it down. And not, on, not only was it not weather to be riding in, but Paulie was there impressively on time. So we had almost three or four hours out riding in Burton in the rain, in the dark. It was not the best of fun. But I think those conditions, when it's difficult, are the best times. That's when you learn, you, you make mistakes more readily, and they can be picked up. But after two hours, I was getting so tired. I was drenched, I was cold, I was miserable. So we decided to have a little Google search for the best chippy in Burton. And it actually turned out to be a really good chippy. They sold this giant haddock. Score. Well, we both definitely needed the energy, both straight from work, and I needed to look after my riding buddy. <laughs> it was a chance to stop, recover, and review. Even if we had to stand in a dodgy alley, we did get some strange looks. I'm sure people thought we were on the rob. Lessons. It was invaluable, getting another perspective from another rider. Not only was it really insightful, and helped me to see what I'd been missing and making assumptions with and what I was doing wrong. In this case, from a younger rider perspective that had just been through the tests, first for a CBT, then for an A, then an A2, and then a full license. So he was able to articulate and outline the omissions and weaknesses that could have cost me the test. So there were actually lots of little niggles that he thought collectively could make a difference. 
I learned a lot in those few hours. One thing I have found was accepting that I am a learner and that I have a lot to learn and being open and taking any important points of view really helped. A lot of other people had given tips and advice and actually had a really good interesting chat with Anthea the red-headed biker and she helped put some things into perspective especially as her son Luke was actually preparing for his test as well. So so many of my friends came out to reassure me and offered me great advice. I think I heard the right thing at the right time. Well, as they say, the universe provides. At the end of the evening, I was aware that Paulie had to go to work the next day. It was not fair to keep him out, especially in the rain, in the dark and in the cold. After all, he had a fair trek and he had to get himself back home. So we had a good laugh and we planned our next trip over the comms as we split up on the motorway and went our separate ways home. Pooley, mate, you're a real gent and a star. Thanks for putting up to me, pal, and going out your way for me. It's really appreciated. Test day, Friday. So, I was quite surprised how calm and relaxed I was. I was happy and easy after last night's ride around in the icebox that was Burton. So as we left the school, we had a quick morning ride with another candidate, and I was first up. Now, when I get nervous sometimes, I get overly chatty, especially when there's an uncomfortable silence. And in doing so, I normally make a prat of myself. And today would not be no different. So, as the examiner came out, he seemed like an amenable chap, and uh, you know he's busy preparing his paperwork. So, in the silence, I thought I'd break, the, you know, break the ice. Said, "Oh, have you seen anything in interesting lately?" He goes, "I don't watch much TV." That this wasn't going well. So, you did a CB, CBT quite a while ago, he said. Oh yes, I took this as a cue to tell him my entire biking story, and then I thought it was a good idea to try and get a subscriber out of him. I'm an idiot. Oh, YouTube channels? Oh, I only subscribe to Ed March, he said. He said, uh, oh, I'd like to meet him one day, seemed like a good bloke, good sense of humour. I thought to myself, I should, probably should have shown up on a C90, and I might have got him on side. This wasn't looking good so far. Right, so I stopped needing to try and get a subscriber out of the examiner and focus on this test. So, we started with the vision check, we moved to the bike, and I started the road component of the test. Overall, by the time we came back after 30 minutes, I wasn't sure. I thought it was a borderline. I just tried to keep my head clear. But as I came to a stop, um, I felt positive and I felt, I don't know, I had a good ride. But one bit of advice I was given was that they're looking for you to be safe. Not perfect technically, but safe. I thought I had been, but there was doubt if I had made too many minor errors. I tentatively parked, switched off the engine, and it was again pouring down at this point. I just sat there unsure of what to do as my mind went blank. Until I saw the examiner park up, run for cover and then my instructor and examiner were calling me over to the sheltered area. I knew the were first words the examiner would ask, so how do you think you've done? He did. Oh, uh, good I think, I replied. He actually said I had 7 minus and 10 minus were a fail. Congratulations, you passed. I was stunned. With a hum in my ear and a confused look on my face, thinking he had made a mistake and he'd not seen everything, no, he'd not counted everything up properly, and I was waiting for the correction. He simply put out his hand and said, Well, oh, thank you very much. I handed my license over. I was still expecting for the other penny to drop. Then I saw my instructor grin and nod. I had already passed. Okay, so I've passed. Me, Mr. Uncoordinated, I'd scraped through a CVT barely. Me, passed. So I asked my instructor, is, is that it? Is there anything else? Have I all done? Definitely then? He said, oh yeah, yeah, you're all done. So that's brilliant. So first of all, I, I called Paulie <laughs> and he was even more shocked than me, but super happy. So our trip to Scotland in a few weeks, I'd just gotten easier. I sent messages to my friends and said thank you to Saddlebags and ER amongst other people for support. I think I actually made a post and as, as I sat there, it took almost 20 minutes for it to sink in. I was now a step closer to my dream of going around the world. 
I had the license finally. I was going to Scotland in a few weeks. Oh yes, bike shopping. Indeed, yes, I needed a new bike. A thousand questions accosted me all at once and just made me sit. One at a time I breathe. I have my 125 and if I can't get another one, it's okay. I hadn't actually planned or organized myself to get another machine. I made a post back at the school taking off my L plates. I, I was really happy but I didn't feel a sense of achievement or perhaps something else was missing for me. It, the whole feeling just felt incomplete. It was something was missing and I think it was probably because I felt I should have been at this point a long time ago. Over a year and a half to get to something that a lot of people normally say just takes a few weeks. So it felt like it was a long time coming and I hadn't done anything incredible. That's how my first year and a half passed in biking. It's not been perfect and I've had more downs and up, but that's life, I suppose. But also it was this feeling that my goal post has suddenly moved. Until this point, I had something quite simple and it was test. And the next step seemed so much more f further away and so much more immense and grand going around the world, getting a new bike, doing my advanced riding, taking more trips, being independent. And that in a lot of ways, I suppose, felt a lot scarier, but also the things that are more difficult are the ones worth doing. So let's see where we can get from here. I've really been lucky with my friends and all the support I've got. And I think I can do a lot more. Thank you for listening.